guys, it's Doc from the Gold Hog, and today I'm going to be doing a bunch of different stuff with you. And I don't really know how I'm going to organize all this, but I'm going to be jumping all around, doing different things, and showing you a few different things, and trying to teach you a little something too. But today we're going to, yesterday we were down here and we actually met Butterbean down here. Uh, Butterbean is the, uh, he was a pro boxer, uh, MMA fighter, and that's one big dude. Let me tell you what, <laughs> don't ever shake his hand unless you're ready. So anyways, I spent some time with uh, Butterbean and I spent some time down the creek and I showed him a few tips on panning and reading the creek a little bit. He's new to prospecting. He's really enjoying it. Uh, so I figured I'd take you over there and show you some of that. I'm going to teach you a little bit about panning and final cleanups. I've done that before, but I wanted to show you again. I'm going to try and teach you a little bit of science. Try not to get too technical on it. I'm going to show you something about the mats. I'm going to show you something about reading the creek a little bit. So I'm going to do a bunch of different stuff. Now today, it's actually, believe it or not, this is August and it's supposed to be 85, 90 degrees and it's struggling to get to 70 and it's cloudy with drizzle sometimes. And we were cold. So I've actually got on my seven millimeter suit even though I'm not diving because uh, this creek where we're working is a little bit deep. But I'm going to take you over. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the dredge before it runs. I'm going to show you the mat and the mat configuration that we're using in a dredge because the dredge is a little bit different. This is a weird dredge. This is one of our little homemade projects that we do every year. Um, then I'm going to show you, we did a quick test run on the one spot that I picked in the creek that I thought would have the best gold for a quarter of a mile around. I just had a feeling about this. We did a test run, about a 40 minute test run, and there's good gold in it. I'm going to show you the initial short test run, then we're going to do a little bit longer run. I'm going to shut down and show you gold in the mats, which I thought would be kind of cool. Then I'll take you over and show you the, the time we had spent with Butterbean. I'm going to show you a little bit about reading the creeks, a little bit about cleanup panning, and a little bit about science. And one thing I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about Newton's first law, which is has to do with inertia. So, and I'm not going to try and get real technical on it, but I'm going to try, I want you to understand why things happen with gold. And that really helps, I think. So I'm going to take you down and show you the dredge first. Okay guys, if there's one simple message that I want you to get from this whole video, and I'm going to tie it all together, and that is the theory of a heavyweight. In other words, gold is really heavy. And this is what I want you to think about as we go through these different segments. I'm going to show you some of the mats, and I want you to think about gold being really heavy. I'm going to show you panning, think about gold being heavy. I'm going to show you the creek, think about gold being heavy. And here's what I want you to think about, and here's what I want you to understand. This applies again to the first, Newton's first law, but everything is in a static position until you apply force to it. In our case, it's going to be water. Gold is very heavy, so it takes a lot of force to get it moving. But as soon as you reduce that force, because it's so heavy, what happens? It drops very quickly. So that's also what I want you to think about, and it's sort of the principle, whether you have riffles, expanded metal, use our mats, no matter what you're using, what type of equipment, I want you to understand that it takes a certain amount of force to get gold moving because it's very heavy, but gold will drop out first because it's so heavy. As soon as you start to reduce the force, it'll drop out, whereas everything else will keep moving. So when you look at our mats, understand that concept that that's why we have so many different areas and so many different sizes and so many different configurations for all sizes of gold. But the same thing in a creek. I want you to think about if you have a big rock in a creek and it's lots of hard water and it's being pushed down a creek, it's not moving the same speed as light sand quartz and silt. All that stuff is moving really fast. The gold and the large rocks and cobbles and gra large gravel is moving a little bit slower. And it's moving slower because it takes a lot more force to get that moving. Well, what does it do as soon as you start to reduce that force? Or it encounters a change in the force, like an inside bend, or a widening out where the river slows down. It drops out, and it drops out really fast. So, when you look at inside bends and see a whole bunch of gravel, guess what else is gonna be there? Or even just before it. Just keep that in mind as we go through this video. Think about heavyweight. Gold is really heavy, it takes a lot of water, it takes a lot of force to get it moving, but as soon as you reduce some of that force, it wants to fall out. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're down here. Say hey, Red. Hey, guys, how are you? <laughs> Red's getting, Red already dived, Red already went down. Alex is going down. Alex is about as thick as a piece of paper, so he's gonna freeze his butt off. 
but this is kind of cool out here today and I'm deep. But I wanted to show you real quick how we've got this thread shed set up. Um, Alex, can you go just lift that flap up there for me so they can see the punch plate? But what we've got is since we don't have a flare on this, this is a 100% homemade dredge that we built. A little fun project we do every year. But you can see up there that there's a quarter inch punch plate up at the top and what I've got is I've got river hog cut down real 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 low up under that and I've got bolts holding that punch plate up about a three quarters of an inch off the mat then we come down to river hog a little bit cut then I come down to river hog that's more cut then I go to scrubber then I'm going to razorback and I'm ending in bedrock so when you see when we clean this mat out you're gonna see what happens with this I'm gonna show you it running but I'm also going to show you what it looks like after cleanup. Now we're finding a little bit of fine gold down here, not much. We're finding like 50s and 100s a little bit. We're finding uh, a good amount of uh, wire gold and fine gold in the Razorback, a decent amount in the scrubber, and we're finding a lot. A lot of our gold is up top here, which is good. That's what I want to see. Probably 70% of our gold is in the first 36 inches up here. And the rest of this just works as a real fine processor. the bedrock lines right here. He's on some good area. That's what I'm talking about. Big old pounders coming through. Decent gold out here. Um, we haven't hit that big, that big heavy chunky stuff, but man, we're finding a lot of fine stuff out here right now. Again, this is our final stage of testing. Um, the final stage of testing before I anchor these guys down, and just let them go for it. So it's a good area. Okay, guys. So, anyways, here's uh, this is our quick test run. Again, it was about a, I mean, on the brand new ground, not even getting a bedrock really. We only cleaned a little bit of bedrock. Here's the cons from the five inch, okay? So I took a corner of this and I just did a test pan real quick using my little method that I shouldn't show you. But here's what I want you to see. Now that's some good looking stuff there. But what I really like about this is, I don't know if you can see it, but within there, I have got a ton of 50s and 100s in there bunch of fine gold. Now, I don't have jet dry with me, so again, when I pan this down, it's all going to want to float away. But I can probably get some of it to stay. But this is what I want to see right there. I want to see that really, really, really fine stuff. You know, if I see that really fine stuff, the 50s, 100s, 150s, then I know I'm running good. Because I know I'm catching this big stuff down here. I know that big stuff is in there. Hey guys, it's Doc and uh, down here today we're, I've actually got the guys setting up down here on a five inch and the four inch down here. And um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one little segment on panning that I've wanted to do for a little while. Just a little bit different thought process that I want you to think about. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna work some of that for you. I had to borrow borrow a pan because I actually left the pan down over here. So, and by the way, we got look who look who's joining me today. <laughs> oh. Doc's here giving me some pointers. <laughs> Butterbean's down here with us. If you know Butterbean, I'm sure you do. He said he'd knock the hell out of me if I didn't find any gold with him. So I gotta watch out. We're down here. We're just playing around, prospecting down here, having a little fun. But I'm going to show you something on panning real quick. And I had to borrow his pan because mine's up the creek with the guys dredging. So 
I'll show you something in just a little bit. And by the way, I like his little setup here. All he's doing is just running it down. He's got it straight down. He's actually going to get, we're going to get him some matting for this. We're going to give him probably some, uh, some razor back for this little setup. Maybe even put him on a little mini. But, tell you what, you've learned one thing, haven't you? Yeah, but one thing I learned is hard work. <laughs> it's good exercise. Without a doubt. <laughs> The weather's cool and I'm already sweating. <laughs> you think boxes stuff come down here and start digging some dirt, man. But anyways, I'm going to show you some of this and actually I'm going to show Butterbean too, a little bit of panning trick I do. Okay guys, so what I want to talk to you about, and you know me, I hate, to, I hate to sound geeky and I hate to sound scientific, but and I usually try and talk in real plain terms. But here's a little different thought for you this time. I'm going to throw a little bit of science at you. And one thing I want you to research, this is I'm going to give you a project, but I want you to research um, inertia and it's actually Newton's first law and that is that every object remains in its current state until some form of force is applied to it so if an object is still it remains still if an object is moving it remains moving until force is applied to it so it sort of comes down to panning and the more force required is because of density typically mass and density and that's kind of the thought process I want you to think about while you're panning is that when you have larger rocks in there, it's one of the reasons why we classify is because it takes more energy um, or more force to move those bigger rocks out, even though the smaller gold has a higher density to it, more specific density. So whenever possible, you always want to go ahead and you always want to classify. That's step number one. But step number two is, is, is the thought about panning, and I'm going to teach Butterbean here a simple thought because he the first thing you got to do when you're prospecting is you got to become a good panner That's the first thing you want to do and I've said this before in a video, but I want you to think about two two Levels on your pan one is when the material everything is separate and it's moving back and forth and everything is loose And we're allowing everything to stratify and what that means is the heaviest stuff is going to the bottom Then we're going to stop and we're going to make the dirt and the pan become one and then we're going to let the water, or the force, move stuff out, the lighter stuff out that has a lower specific density on it. Because the gold is going to be hidden down the bottom. So when I shake this pan, the gold is going to be down here in this corner because I have it this angle. It's all going to be down here. So when you watch, <clears throat> I'll start shaking it, and I'll get it to settle, and then I'll move the pan, and I'll move everything down in this corner. And then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to let the water move the dirt. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to make everything move, everything is loose and separate, and then I'm going to jiggle, 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 jiggle down to this corner. All the corner is going to be, gold is going to be deep, and then I'm just going to let the water move the dirt. The pan and the dirt become one. The dirt doesn't move. The water moves the dirt. So I'm going to show you that real quick. All right, so here's where I am. I'm going to take my dirt, and I'm going to get everything moving in it. Everything is moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and I'm going to start to tip my pan, and I'm going to jiggle, and then I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to let the water move the dirt. The dirt doesn't move. The water moves the dirt. And as soon as I see a little bit of black sand in here, I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to bring it back down, back and forth. And you can see everything is loose, 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 loose. Jiggle, jiggle down to the corner and stop. Now the pan and dirt are one. And the water is moving the dirt. Alright, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit for you here, and I'm going to jiggle, and I'm going to jiggle it, I'm going to tilt it, tilt it, tilt it, jiggle, 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 stop, I'm going to let the water, the water's moving the dirt, and I can see that black sand, and I'm going to stop, bring it back down, settle everything heaviest to the bottom, this will become light, a lot of wind out here today, okay, so here's what I want you to see, now it's starting to turn dark. When I bring it back down and I jiggle it, it's going to be light on top. And I'm going to take it down to dark. And you can see how dark that is. You can see how dark it is. I jiggle it and it'll actually get a little bit of light. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create my shaker table. This hand is not going to move. This hand is not going to move. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my pan and tap. 
And if you know anything about gold, it's heavy, so every time I tap, it's going to come up and be walk over this side. So again, I'm going to get it nice and loose. Now notice the amount of water I have. You can't have too much water. It's about a half an inch around this. Tap, 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 tap. My other hand's not moving. And what you're going to see is you're going to see gold start to show up in that corner over there. And I actually work gold down to um, flower gold down to 150 minus gold this way. I can get it out this way. Tap, tap, tap. And I tilt, flatten my pan up, flatten my pan, flatten my pan. And what you'll see is you'll see a bunch of fine gold down here. Super, super fine gold all in here. I can just give a little tap, it's going to show up more. But the majority of my gold is now going to be down in this corner over here. Right over in here. I'm going to show it to you one more time. So again, when I get down to this level, I'm going to mix it up again. And now watch what happens. I watch the corner, I want you to watch the corner of this pan right here. So tap, 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 tap. And there it is. It's all going to come over here. Even the little baby stuff that's over here. Little tiny, tiny, tiny stuff. You see that? Butterbean's over here looking at it with I'm making sure he's doing it right. See it I'm learning. See that tiny, tiny, tiny stuff? You get that out with the sucker, right? Yep. And then all I'm going to do is is I'm going to tap it, and it's going to walk up that side of the pan. Just gently tap, and all that gold will actually go up on this side over here. If I had jet dry in here, the fine stuff wouldn't float. One reason that we want to, when you're, especially when you're panning, start to pull out those large rocks is because it requires more force to move those larger rocks. And at the same time, you can move the little tiny gold out at the same time. But I always like to see, people always want to know, well, how do I get, when I get down to this part, how do I get that gold out? And I love that little shaker table trip that you just tap, 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 tap on the side and all that gold and as you flatten it out and flatten it out and flatten it out, all that gold will show up down here on that corner. Then you can just tap and just walk it up and suck it out with a bottle. And that's how I clean my cons. You know, even if I'll work it down and super concentrate it and I'll have, let's say, uh, a, a couple gallons of cons, I'll just take it about a half a cup at a time and just pan it and just, and just do it like this. And I'm talking, I'm going to get the camera and show you the fine gold I'm talking about here. It might be too much, but I want you to see the gold I'm talking about here. See all those little tiny, tiny, tiny dots? That's what I'm talking about. Now there's bigger gold over here, but I'm talking about this starry stuff over here. That's, that's 50 to 200 mesh gold over there that I'm panning by hand and getting to go to this corner using this method. But that's, one, that's one thing when you get down to that level, how do I get that little gold out? And that's what everyone wants to know. And that's what you do. And you do it small. When you get down to concentrates, you get your concentrates, take a tablespoon at a time, put it in your pan, and work at that tap method. That side tap, side tap, side tap. And take your sucker bottle. Don't try and get just gold. You may have to take a little bit of black sand out with it, but you'll have a one bottle full of mostly gold and a little bit of black sand. Then you can work that one bottle. So that was today's lesson on panning real quick, especially on fine gold, which we have a ton of here in Georgia which he's starting to learn. It helped me. Yeah. I, ain't got, I like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's little, little tiny gold that you got. The majority of people are going to find. Everyone's out here. And he actually found some nuggets out here digging in. He found two nice little pieces down here. We were just digging in the creek, weren't you? Yeah, just getting right out of the creek. Yeah. and and But most of the time, even in this creek, you got to look for that little fine stuff. That's what we're going to find down here. All right. We're going to come back later. And plus, I'm going to be down there later. I'm going to show you some of the five-inch stuff, too. Okay guys, I'm gonna interrupt here real quick for a second, and I'm talking about this panning method, but I wanna show you or tell you why this works, not just how to do it. So I'm gonna show you a little clip about energy and inertia, and show you what gold does and what it looks like underneath all that black sand. And I think this is an important lesson to learn. Okay, so I want you to look at this, and what I've got in here is I've got mostly gold, and I've got a little bit of black sand, and there might be a couple garnets or black rocks that might be hematite or something. But what I want you to watch is, this is the same sort of setup. This is the, about the same amount of water. And what I want you to see is, I want you to see how little that gold actually moves. 
So you can see that the gold really isn't moving that much. Even though that water is sloshing back and forth, that gold isn't moving. But I want you to understand that the pan is moving. And I want you to think about slamming your brakes on in a car. If you're going 30 miles an hour and everything's going forward and someone hits the brakes, what happens? You feel that force. You have that, that force that drives you forward. And now what I want you to watch is I want you to watch what happens to the gold when I, when I hit this side. You can see that the gold wants to maintain that energy and keep going this way. And you'll also notice that the lighter material doesn't store as much energy and stays on the back. So let me mix it up a little bit again. Let me try and show this to you again. So here we go. We're going back and forth and now you can see the black sand in there. The black sand is actually moving in there. The black sand, which is heavy of course, but the gold is really heavy. So it's not really moving. It's sort of staying still. But it is moving with the pan. And when I finally hit, you can see that all that gold wants to come up here and look where the black sand is. The black sand is back over here. Let me try and get this where it's not so reflective. But you can see the black sand is back over here because it doesn't store as much energy, but the gold is down here. And the more pure this gold is, the more it'll be over here and you'll see the less pure and I've got hematites and weird shape gold down over here. Let's bring it all together. Let me try it like this. But you can see how little that gold wants to move. That gold really doesn't want to move, but the black sand and those little garnets and hematites, whatever they are, they are moving. And now when I tap, you can see that gold, the gold wants to move. Even the little fine stuff wants to move up in this corner. It's storing that energy, and when you stop, it's going to come up to this corner. So that's what's going on underneath all that. When you see black sand and lights and everything's moving around, that's what the gold is doing underneath all that. And that's what I wanted you to see. Hey guys, we're just out here and I'm out here with uh, Butterbean and we're out here talking about reading a creek and talking about gravels. And I'm going to show you something that's pretty easy to do or figure out. And we're talking about an inside bend up here and I'm going to show you over here some silt where it turns to gravel. And what you can see is, is this is soft silt. There's very little gravels in here. There's vegetation. It's very, very soft. And then all of a sudden it starts to get gravels. So now you're starting to see gravels. But I really want you to see this up here. And you can see this up here. And you can see how prominent all these gravels are up here. Well, why is that? Well, it's because, and there's actually a tree down up here. There's an inside bend up here. There's a gravel bar up on top. The gold comes around this corner. It leaves that corner, and it's going to come in a straight line. And it's hitting right here, which is the next inside bend. So now, all of a sudden, we've got an inside bend coming here, and we've got heavy gravel deposits. Well, if the heavy gravel is depositing out here first, what else is depositing here? The gold is also depositing. So that's why you see when you want to follow your, your pay streak or your gold streak, the gold is up here on this corner coming around. Then it comes off this corner fairly straight, maybe a little bit, maybe a little fall over here, and then it's going to come down here. And you'll always see this on your inside bends. So this is the beginning of an inside bend, and you'll see these gravel deposits. As that bend starts to turn and disappear, you'll see this. Now all of a sudden you'll see soft silt and sand. So what I always like to do, we're talking about where do you want to dig, I always like to dig right on these gravels or even just before, and I'll do a couple test pans all along here just to figure out where this gold is. And that's what we're doing. He's over here, he's digging some of that inside bend over here. We're taking test pans. And the other thing I was doing is, um, I was telling them about that uh, backside, that other property that we're doing, where we've got that huge sandbar over there, and I was just taking a pan at a time, pan at a time, and I was finding seven colors and ten colors. It was just one of those crazy inside bends. So it's interesting. So watch these inside bends. Look for the gravels versus the soft silt. That's what you want to look for. I'll take you down and show you another one further on.
Okay guys, so we just did a run and I'm going to show you some gold in the mats. I'm trying to get some shade so you can see this stuff, but you can see the gold in here. Now this is at the this is at the very top of the mat. But I want you to see the fine stuff in here. If I can find my finger. I want you to try and see the fine stuff that's in here. And then I want you to look over here. But this is just this little area at the top of the mat. I mean, there's gold all in here. There's gold all down here. I mean, there's gold right here. There's gold all in there. I mean, that's a piece of almost 100 gold. 50 and 100s up in here, up near the top. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of rinse it a little bit more. Hopefully you get it to stay put. But you can see right up in here. I'm trying to get away from that light. It's reflective. But you can see the gold up in here. I mean, this upper mat is just full of gold up here. I mean, it's not going to be, you know, an ounce run or anything crazy, but good run. When you see this much gold at the very, very top of your mat, that's how we, that's when we know we've got a pretty decent run going. There's a nice piece there. And as we come down, there's pieces inside here. And there's pieces all in this pre-ramp, but I want you to also look down in here. If I can get it to shade out a little bit. And this is a little bit further down on this cut river hog. And you can see how deep that stuff works in there. It's just amazing how deep it gets. And you can't see anything on the surface until you start cleaning this stuff. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this trip and I hope I covered a few things that can help you out. I will tell you that over the next couple of weeks we're going to be doing some little bit different stuff and running some different equipment. And also this fall we'll be going to a couple different places, so stay with us for that. But one thing I do want you to keep in mind is, especially whether it's reading a creek, whether it's panning, whether it's building your equipment, choosing the right riffle, choosing the right matting, no matter what it is, is understand velocity and understand inertia and understand that gold is really heavy. And that once it's hard to get moving, and that once that velocity changes or that force changes, it's going to want to drop out. The other thing that's real important that I want you to understand is that mining and prospecting is a learning process. And if you refuse to learn, and if you refuse to open up your mind and to educate yourself, you'll never get any better. I want you to constantly educate yourself and constantly think about these things. And that's why I try and throw them at you. I try and throw a little bit of science at you so that you'll challenge stuff You'll test stuff and you'll try and figure it out yourself. Hope you learned something. Stay with us. I'll be taking you along on a couple trips all through this season and all through the fall and even into the winter. Take care.